The astonishing program you're about to watch is truly inexplicable. It was recorded in 2021, in the midst of the pandemic, and the reasons why it didn't reach your screen until now are still under investigation. People who have watched it warned that the program contains high doses of information, entertainment, and foolish humor. Viewer discretion is advised. Talks show, the first entertainment program that is done by and for professionals in the swine sector. The only program that they put some pork on your fork. If we are in a swine program and we don't talk about African swine fever, we will be not a good people. Let's say that we will not be in that world. Because, you know, African swine fever has been here forever. I like to say that instead of African swine fever, to talk about African swine forever, maybe. Because wherever the virus was first described in 1921, it was known that in Africa was starting to go around since 1907. <laughs> An important data, it was 1957, when the virus from Africa was jumping to, uh, in this case, to Portugal, to Europe. So that was making a big difference. But probably the most important data was 2018. Why 2018? Because 2018 was just a few years ago when that explodes in China. And the picture of the swine wall changed a lot when that was happening. It's interesting to see that only 1,454 articles are published in the last 60 years about African swine fever, which means that we were not probably taking as important as should be. We need to know that, uh, and of course, there are uh, not a lot of articles about vaccines, and sometimes the articles that we have in vaccines, you need to go and look really very deep, 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 because, uh, the information sometimes needs to be more polite. Anyway, when we talk about African swine fever, we know that there are two different situations. The one that we have in Europe, which is basic focus on wild boar, and another one that we have in Asia, that it's basically in, in conventional swine farms. So yeah, it's a problem. And I will end up with, with something that it's a little bit more personal. Huh? The reason that I am a veterinarian is African swine fever. Why? Well, because African swine fever was hitting my family farm. And I always remember the day that they were killing all the animals at the farm, at home. And I remember that day that I was a kid at home, and it was a really very devastating day, day because all the business that we were having those days, it was really very going down and down and down. But, ah, yeah. Forget it about that. That's not time to, to complain and to, to, to think about sad things because now is time of have the show time and the show time starts now. So let's go to enjoy the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. African swine fever. What a topic. Well, if we talk about African swine fever, we just have one person to invite. We have a person that is a, it's a warrior, is someone that it's, it's a professor, and it's a doctor. I like to say that the doctor is, it comes from doctare, doctare is to, to teach. It's someone that is always teaching. Uh, it's a person that he has more, almost 40 persons that are doing the PhD or was PhD from, from them, uh, from Murcia. Being born in Murcia, he was um, studying the school in, in Madrid and then he was going to Cornell University and then he came back to Spain. It's one of these persons that I think Spain did need to be really very proud of them, of, of what he did. No? Because thanks to this person, we today we can talk about a lot of things about African swine fever. So I don't want to say anything else because if I say the name of this, I think that we will know him. If you don't know yet, we will know him really very. So it's a pleasure for me to invite Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaino. 
<laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Jose Manuel. A pleasure to be here oh, with you. Oh, my goodness. Do, you could not imagine how happy I am oh, that me, you are here. Me too, to see you. It's Wonderful. amazing. It's great to have you. And in person, you know. Yeah. That vivo, vivo. I know that I can not touch you, but oh, my goodness. You, <laughs> have, you are here in person. Thank you, Miquel, for the invitation. Jose Manuel, come on. After all these years, we still need to talk about African swine fever? Yeah. What happens, Jose Manuel? Yeah, it's true, it's unbelievable, Mikel. I started in ASF, working in ASF in 1978, and this is the worst situation I never saw in my life. So it's already four continents infected, four continents, more than 50 countries, and millions dead animals. So it's really a big, big problem. It's one of the biggest threat that the swine industry have today. Is, is eradication the only way? Because, do you know, you were the guy that were, uh, you, when you were at Cornell, you were bringing ELISA here in Spain. <laughs> that was not really very a common technique, and you were applying that with a great success. So it's, it's the only way, or? Well, it's depending. Depending if you are an exported country, or you are an imported country, or you just want to get, leave the disease. So you, there are many places where the people can live with African swine fever and still to reduce the disease day by day, and they have a good production. So depending on the management, and especially what kind of country do you want. If really, if you want to have an international movement and trademark, you need to eradicate it, because ASF belong to one of these diseases that stop everything, movements, products, animals, etc. How often, uh, how soon it will be African swine fever in USA? <laughs> well, I don't, uh, if you tell me that, I will bring my glass, my glass ball, you know, but I forget <laughs> to dig. But anyway, I, I know that the risk is increasing, is increasing in the States. I know that for several reasons. One, because the biggest problem probably is, is in Venezuela at this moment, at this moment, because it's the only place that is receiving food from China or from Russia. The only countries that can give some uh, help to Venezuela at this moment are the Chinese and the Russians. And we have a lot of information that there is meat, meat from pig and meat products from pig that arrive in these planes. So it's, you know, the probability that sometime they can infect it is very, very high. And once that they came to Venezuela, they will not detect it. And probably we're going to detect it when they go to other countries and probably a lot of countries Who in knows? between. <laughs> Nobody knows. I'm talking about vaccines. Uh, well, we have two scenarios. So we have um, Asia scenario, which is yeah. in the conventional population in a farm. And we have the wild board. Yes. So should we have two strategies of vaccination or should be the same one? No, I think it should be different. should be different because there are different problems. Even that the disease is the same, the, the, the way how the, the behavior of domestic and behavior of wild boar is quite different. So in the wild boar, what we are preparing is an oral vaccine, oral vaccinations, because it's very interesting. The animals can take it and different scenarios. And we also have a DIVA test for that. So in, 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 in wild boar, it's going to be oral, but in, in, in domestic, probably it's going to be or intramuscular or intradermic, but no oral. So that's going to be different. The route of administration is going to be different. And also it's going to be different, the doses, the doses. The wild boar need a little less doses than uh, the, the domestic. So it's going to be probably the same product, the same vaccine, but in different way or route of administration and probably doses as well. Jose Manuel, and what about safety? Well, Mikel, safety is the most important aspect of any vaccine. And in particular, in one disease like African swine fever, that, as you know, is no clear neutralizing antibody. So to, safety is the most important, and for me, it's the number one, number two, and even number three, safety, 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 later efficiency, of course, and to have DIVA vaccine. I think this is also important. So I can tell you that the vaccine that is going to leave from our laboratory, I hope, relatively soon, it's going to have safety, 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 <laughs> efficiency, and diva. By the way, you say soon. Wow. 
that looks promising, no? Or yeah, should uh, we, we be nervous about this soon? Well, you know, uh, the, the results that we have are really very promising. And uh, we already have adapted to tissue culture production. And so things look very good. At least that something wrong can come in the future. Uh, I am very happy that before the end of the project, we're going to have a vaccine. Thank you, Jose Manuel, for these great, great insights. Thank you very much. And now, now let's go to a long tradition. As far as one program long, well, anyway, this long tradition is to connect with our head of the swine uh, of MSD Animal Health, which is Rika Jolie from the cold Kansas City. Hello, Rika. Good evening, Mikhail. Good to see you. Uh, Unfortunately, it's still uh, on camera and not in live. Uh, this is a pity. I don't know when that will happen again. But anyway, here we have Dr. Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaino. Mm, maybe you want to take this occasion to, to ask one question, no? Yeah, it would be my pleasure. First of all, thank you very much, Dr. Vizcaino, to uh, join uh, this tradition and, and uh, join our novel concept, our novel show here. Um, I do have a question for you, and of course it's related to African swine fever. Uh, just recently, uh, there was some press around a possible vaccine in Vietnam. Uh, what are your comments on that? Is this a vaccine that we can soon uh, see in a lot of the, the countries? Uh, what do you think? Okay, very glad to see you, Rika, and thank you very much for the invitation for this wonderful show. He really is conducted a beautiful program. I agree with you. Very good program. So thank you very much for the invitations. In relation with your questions, it's really not an easy question because there are not too much information. Uh, we only uh, read, we have the chance to read a paper that was uh, a publication, a scientific publication related with the vaccine and well, was uh, make it uh, with a deletion. They make a d delayed one gene of the ASF virus, and they have some experiments with not too large animals, a number of animals, but uh, look like it's good enough to protect the homologous virus. But I don't know in Vietnam that are going to be different viruses that the one that he already challenged, and it's going to be the difficulties for productions because they have to use leukocytes. So there is uh, still a few questions that we don't know what is going to be the answer. So uh, I apologize, I cannot give you a clear answer of that because there still are questions that need to wait for a little more time. All right, well, uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your answer. Obviously, there's still a lot of uncertainty around this topic, uh, but we very much appreciate you joining our show tonight. Thank you, thank you, Rika. Thank you very much, you. Yeah, thank you, Rika, again for this. Always, you touch the question, always you put the question that is needed to put in the moment that we need to have it. Thank you very much, Rika, for being with us tonight. Thank you, Mikel. Enjoy the rest of the show. And thank you very much, Dr. Jose Manuel, for being with us tonight. As always, it's been a big, big pleasure. Thank you very much, Dr. Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaino. Thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mikel. Thank you very much. Thank you. For me, it's also a pleasure to be with you here. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Good evening, I'm Miquel Collet. And I'm Olivia Flor. And this is Breaking Swine News, a news bulletin that is brief but very tasty like bacon mix. Council approved European wide label for animal welfare. Yeah, the Council has approved a conclusion for an EU-wide animal welfare label, highlighting the overarching objective of improving animal welfare for as many food-producing animals as possible. A common EU label on animal welfare will increase credibility and transparency and will enable consumers to make more informed choices. Similar label is underway in Spain. Informing from there, our colleague Marcial Marcos. Thank you, Olivia. The National Interprofessional Organization for White Pork, Interpork, launched the Welfare Commitment Certification last May. This seal endorses the good practices carried out in the field of animal welfare, health, biosecurity, animal handling and traceability, in all links of the value chain of white pork in Spain, from the farm, transport and slaughter to the industry and commercialization. 
Since it's launched more than 40 farms, 10 slaughterhouses, and the majority of industry players are received this much demanded certification. I have a question for you, Marcial. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do you mind? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. What do you think about that? Do you think that this <laughs> ham, they have certification, this certification? This is one of the main products we have in our country, and for sure, this one is certificated for sure. You oh can eat, goodness. you can eat. Sure. Eh? And taste. Um, yeah, of course. Mm, delicious. Oh my what goodness. What do you think? Eh? It's Perfect. lovely. Delicious. Mm. Oli, do you want some? Please, Mikael, send some of it to New Jersey. China takes its pigs to the futures market. Yeah, China finally opened its own hog futures market. The culmination of 20 years of long effort to create a transparency pricing mechanism for one of the country's most valued agriculture products. Farmers, traders and other market participants in January started selling contracts for live pigs for September and December 2021 and March 2022. Informing for Asia, our colleague Hong Yoling. Thank you, Olivia. China's live hog futures tumbled on their first trading day after a hotly anticipated debut as the industry looks for a safeguard against wild swings triggered by one of the world's worst animal disease outbreak. The contract on the Dalian Commodity Exchange slid almost 13% on the day of opening. The price drops reflect earlier expectations that China's hog population, which is the world's largest, will continue to expand after earlier being decimated by the deadly African swine fever outbreak of 2019-2018. That's really interesting, Hong Hong. I have a question. You know, I have a really very close friend that he's always asking to invest money in some place, and I think that maybe I can tell him that that could be a good a good chance to to invest money there. What do you think that I should say to my friend? Well, Miguel, my advice for your friend would be twofold. First of all, remember to only invest in what you can afford to lose. And secondly, remember that these are physical delivery contracts, meaning that at the end of the contract, if you're still holding on to it, you'll have to take delivery of the house. So make sure you have space in your backyard for it if that's what you plan. That's good to know. Thank you, Hong. I think that was a great advice. Thank you very much. Come on, Mikel. We know there's no such trend. I know. But thank you, Hong. Thank you very much for such good information. This is a tasty one, Mikel. Brazil is joining Australia in the use of insects in pig feed. Researchers in Brazil have started to zoom in on the usage of insects as suitable ingredient for animal diets. They join Australia in the quest to discover alternative to the creation of sustainable animal feeding. The use of insects in pig feed is becoming one of the most research strategies worldwide in the swine sector. So informing from Brazil, our colleague Rudy Clore. Hi Olivia, it's true. A team of scientists from Brazil Federal University of Minas Gerais, led by Professor Diego Vicente da Costa, recently proved that insects have similar protein digestibility levels to soy and provide more lipids, vitamins, and minerals. Nutrient intake and feed conversion were 18% better for piglets' feed, a cricket meal based diet. Professor da Costa affirmed that we will see pig production using lots of insects very soon, and that we, humans, will be feeding on them as well. It's just a matter of time, said Professor da Costa. Wow, Rudy, it's me or I can hear some music behind you? What happens? Is carnival there or...? You know, Brazil is a party, and remember that we are in a week of carnival, so our country is a party. We really appreciate your reporting, even on your carnival week. But hey, let's go back to the question. Um, what would be then your preferred insect, Rudy? Uh, Olivia, I would prefer hens because uh, countries like Colombia consider hens as a kind of delicatessen. So maybe I will try. <laughs> That's interesting to see. Thank you, Ru- Rudy. Do you see yourself enjoying crickets, Olivia? <laughs> uh, Mikael, you know, I'm more of a beetle fan. Oh my Let's goodness. Put it that way. Let's say that I prefer Susan Vega. Well, and that concludes Breaking Swine News, a news bulletin where we serve news the way you like him. Which means, well done. Oops. Oh, it's the end. The end of the second program. <laughs>
time flies when you are enjoying a lot. And today it's been a really very great program. Remember, we've been with African Swine Fever talking with Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaino. What a nice topic. And again, Rica, Olivia, all the people were there. And we will have another one. And next one will be on Smart Farming. Let's try to be there and enjoy. Goodbye.